Today I want to show you how to convert photos into 3D cartoon characters using stable diffusion. This way, you'll have some nice cartoon images for your social media. Maybe you're a designer seeking cartoon inspiration or in need of a cartoon mascot for your site or marketing materials. You'll need to download a model called Wildcard Animation Version 2 from the Civit AI website. Click on the download button and save it in your Forge folder. Look for the Web UI folder, then navigate to Models and finally to Stable Diffusion. Save the downloaded file in that folder. As you can see, I've already downloaded it. After it's downloaded, it may take a few minutes since it's quite big. You can find it in the Stable Diffusion Checkpoint drop-down menu. If it doesn't appear, hit Refresh, and then you can select that model. This model is proficient at generating cartoon images, for example, if I try to generate a cartoon cat, I get something like this. Click on the image to image tab and then upload your own image. In my case, it's a photo of a princess. Add a prompt that describes the image, mentioning the objects you want to appear, such as the crown and the veil. And then to ensure it becomes a cartoon, add the text. A professional 3D design of a cartoon, followed by the subject which can be a woman, car building, or anything else. After that, add extra Pixar art style to achieve a nice clean 3D cartoon look. For the negative, you can find an example on the model page. Copy that text without the quotes and paste it into the negative prompt area. Then scroll down to the width and height settings and ensure they have a similar ratio to your uploaded image. Next, focus on the denoise strength. Start with 0.35 if you want the cartoon image to closely resemble your original photo and increase it up to 0.6 for a more distinct result. Click on Generate and you'll receive a cartoon image very similar to your original. If you increase the denoise strength to 0.5, you'll notice it has more power and creates a more different version. Um, further increasing it will, will result in even bigger variations, so adjust the slider until you achieve a result you like. Keep in mind that some images are easier to convert into a cartoon version than others, so experiment with different prompts, denoise strengths, and images. I'll remove the current image and upload a photo of a dog instead. For the prompt, I'll adjust the first part to say a dog and replace woman with dog. After hitting Generate, we'll get a very similar cartoon version of the dog. When dealing with animals, I like to increase the denoise strength a bit more, around 0.45, to achieve a cool cartoon look with big eyes and a nice 3D appearance. You can generate the image a few times until you find one you like. Now let's convert an object like a car this time. I'll change the prompt to a white car. Despite the misspelling, it will still work. Since I want the objects to be even more exaggerated than the animals, I'll use a denoise strength of 0.6, resulting in a really cool 3D cartoon car. Um, I'll try the next photo with a girl, and remember to adapt the prompt accordingly to avoid mutations. Since people typically need a lower denoise strength compared to animals and objects, I'll adjust the strength for the girl to achieve a similar look. You can even drag the results and use that as a starting point to get a more cartoonish version while still resembling the original. One nice feature is that you can adjust the prompt to include more details. For example, I can make the girl angry by adding angry to the prompt, or I can make her cry. Let's increase the denoise to get an exaggerated version of that cartoon. You can have fun playing with emotions, adding different colors, objects, and so on. Here's a quick example of a lion and how I obtained a cartoon version of it. You can also try with buildings. However, to achieve a truly cartoonish version, uh, you'll need to increase the denoise strength, but this may make it less similar to the original. So it's a bit of a compromise. If it closely resembles the building, it won't have... Uh, the exaggerated features characteristic of a cartoon. You can also experiment with using ControlNet. Uh, some of you have asked for ControlNet videos, but I'm still encountering errors when the image size is not divisible by 64. Therefore, I'm waiting for a fix before creating a tutorial for ControlNet.
It also works with plants and trees so you can get really creative with images around you. I'll quickly try another one for a man with a beard. Notice how I play around with prompts and denoise strength. Experimentation is key to getting what you want. Try different seeds, change the prompt, add different colors and lights. Usually, cartoons are more colorful and have exaggerated features, so make it fun. Speaking of fun, I took a photo of a measuring tool with my fingers to create a body-like shape. Um, I used this prompt for a cartoon robot with a denoise strength of 0.6 to make it more creative. As you can see, I can generate a few times to get different toy robot ideas based on that simple image. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, only your imagination is your limit. I took a brush from the kitchen and turned it into a monster. This tool could be really helpful for concept artists to come up with new original ideas based on a random image. If you want more control over how things are generated, you can do it like I do. In Photoshop, you can quickly paint the shapes and colors your cartoon images should have. For example, here I used a hard transfer brush to quickly sketch the shape of a monster head. It took less than a minute to create a rough sketch. Squint your eyes, and when you can see the basic shapes, you can copy that image and paste it into Stable Diffusion. Here you just uh, add a prompt that describes what you want to create, uh, and with a denoise strength of 0.5 in my case, you can generate a few versions to see what you can come up with. I just noticed the initial sketch was too small on the canvas, so I enlarged it in Photoshop to fit better. Then I pasted it back into stable, uh, stable Diffusion and generated it again to get a nice quality cartoon monster. Uh, it's a unique design in just two minutes. I'll use the same technique to create the YouTube thumbnail. I hope I've given you some ideas on how you can approach cartoon creation. If you found this video helpful, leave a like. Thank you for watching and for your support. Have an awesome week.